Welcome back to the Good Morning Niger Show. We have our first guest joining us. Today we're going to be looking about dyslexia and how we can handle uh, children living with dyslexia. What exactly is dyslexia? We had him a while ago and due to popular demand, we decided to bring him back again to have this conversation. We're joined by Dr. Ben Aripo from the Dyslexia Foundation Nigeria. Thank you so much, Doctor, for joining us. It's a delight to have you again. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, let me start with a point of correction. I'm not a doctor. I'm ordinary Mr. Ben Aripo, mm -hmm. but I'm a dyslexia specialist. I'm, a, I'm an applied psychologist, and I do know any, many things about the brain and how you can work with your brain and how you can overcome dyslexia. So just that correction. Oh, thank, thank you very you. much for that. Nice uh, that must have been a, yeah. a production error. All right, um, let's uh, go yeah, straight into that. today's conversation. We've had a conversation with you about uh, uh, dyslexia before, and we want to find out about how you know people people need to understand more about dyslexia what would you say so far is the awareness rate of dyslexia in nigeria uh, quite frankly the awareness rate is less than five percent at the moment and this is a, the sad thing less than five percent of nigerians are aware while the awareness is improving at the time we started the dyslexia foundation there was absolutely no awareness about dyslexia in the country. But to the glory of God, we have been able to do a lot of things. And now more and more organizations are also being set up to promote dyslexia. So to that extent, it's a very good thing that the awareness is improving, but it could be better than it is at the moment. Hmm. OK, so now um, lo looking at uh, the whole conversation on dyslexia, uh, like for the local man on the streets who probably mm -hmm. wouldn't understand what dyslexia is. If it's there where you can break it down for them to know, okay, this is the thing we're talking about. So that if you see it, you will know, say, okay, now it is just on layman terms. Can you just explain what dyslexia okay. is? Yes. All right. Uh, let me start with what dyslexia is not. I always like to start with that. Okay. Because the confusion is often with what it is not. Okay. Dyslexia is not a disease. So you can't diagnose it in a hospital or in, you cannot say uh, this person has this disease, mm. just like you have malaria, and after two weeks or three weeks of treatment, it can go away. No. Dyslexia is not a disease. This, because dyslexia is not a disease, it does not have a cure like you would cure and treat and cure malaria or any other sickness or disease. So what is dyslexia then? Dyslexia is a brain condition that makes people, both children and adults, unable or struggle with reading, writing, writing, spelling, comprehension, and very often an associated condition called attention deficit disorder or an attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Mm. So when you see your child struggle with reading or is unable to read at the, at the rate of his class or his or her classmates, yeah. then you can begin to suspect that that child might have dyslexia. When the child is unable to write, the writing is not legible and it's not even readable, then that means that the child might be having dyslexia. You need to check for that. Mm -hmm. When the child begins to struggle with spelling, uh, when I, uh, first, but I should say this, uh, I'm a proud parent of a child with dyslexia, very proud of it. But when we started this journey, and I was helping him, and I said to him, spell house, he started with K, <laughs> and that's, that's what happens with people with dyslexia. Because when you say house, they cannot identify the sound code in house for them to know that house should start with the H, H, H sound. Mm -hmm. so, so when you see a person struggle with writing, reading, spelling, and comprehension, and the person lacks focus and concentration, then it's time to seek for help because those are the early signs of dyslexia that you might be worried about. So people, parents, when you see that, that's the alarm bell should start to ring. And then you should start looking for help, you know. Um, and luckily, yeah. for, luckily, there's help in Nigeria now. Yes, ma'am. I think that this is very important because I was once a teacher, and I remember a particular pupil as you were talking, 
who I would ask to spell and will start from a totally different consonant. But I don't know that a yeah. lot of teachers are aware about dyslexia. How well or uh, how informed are teachers? Let's use our state, Lagos State, as an example. Mm -hmm. How informed do you think teachers are about dyslexia? And how well do you think or how important is it that maybe it is incorporated as part of the curriculum or the training at maybe NCE or TC2 or at whatever state, maybe uh, uh, regular tr timely trainings in schools for the teachers? Yeah, I, I'm aware that, I'm aware that bef before the lockdown, uh, Lagos State Government was planning a conference on learning disabilities generally uh, before the lockdown to, to train teachers so that they can also know about all the the spectrum of learning challenges and how to deal with them. But having said that, until that happens, at the moment, in 2018, we had our teacher training, our first teacher training, and we did a survey with the teachers who were present. And 67% of the teachers who were present at that training have never heard of dyslexia. Wow. 67%. In fact, one of them said clearly that it was because she did not know what it was about that made her to come. When they sent the letter to their uh, head of school and they were looking for who to send, they said, okay, since this is something I don't know about, let me just go there and then find out what it's about. So the awareness among teachers is very low. That's why you find teachers beating the children, abusing the children, and calling them names True. while in the class. I'm sure most of us remember the video that went viral both the one in Nigeria and the one outside Nigeria just a couple of months ago. That's because the teacher and the parents are unaware of what was wrong with this, this, these children. And so the only way they have to respond is to beat them. Beating is not the answer. It will never solve the problem. Okay. So, so now let's talk about adjusting to it. Today we're looking at how parents yeah. can adjust to it. And from an experiential point of view, this has been your reality. You know, you found yes. out from a young, from when your child was little, that your child was a child living with dyslexia. How were you mm. uh, and your family able to adjust? So we're hoping that we wow. can get an insight from your experience to help other parents in similar positions. Thank you. I, I want to re-emphasize that point. I'm a proud parent of a dyslexic child. Mm. I found out when he was nine. And as we speak, he's 17. In SS2 in a school here in Lagos. So what does that tell us? The first thing is acceptance. Many parents are in denial, and that annoys me, especially for men. The fathers will say, ah, oh, don't worry. There's nothing wrong with him. Or they will even say, I was like that growing up, but look at me now, I'm successful. <laughs> your success today is, your, is the failure of tomorrow. When you think, so first thing I want to ask parents is, all, is first and foremost, accept. Accept the gift that God has given to you. God did not bring this child into your family for nothing. There's a reason for God giving you this child. And it's always for good. Stop the denial. Face the reality. When you face the reality of the situation, then you start to seek for help. When I found, my wife was complaining before he was nine. <sighs> This boy is not meeting up. This boy is not catching up. I said, come on, he will catch up. Because he had two elder, uh, senior siblings who were doing extremely well in school. But the reality dawned on me when I was helping out to, to prepare him for his uh, school exam when she traveled. And the lesson teacher didn't come. And it was from that moment on I took over seeking help. So the next thing you do once you accept the reality, the first thing is accept the reality. The second thing is to seek help. And when you start to seek help, as we speak, seeking help has led me to use this situation to found the Dyslexia Foundation. Because once it was obvious that this was a situation and we found the help for him, we couldn't just let the other children I saw in a vision during that period to go unhelped. So that was how the Dyslexia Foundation was founded, in seeking help for him. And then, of course, the, 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 the Brain Training Center was also supported. Now, you know there are many people like uh, Albert Eskin, Steve Jobs, Richard Braxton, who are dyslexic, but their bundle of success. There's something we call dyslexic advantage. There is an advantage. There's something that that child 
is supposed to contribute to the world in your home, to make your home known, to make your name great. So accept the reality, seek help, find help. The help is available. Once you do that, then you are the, almost at the, at the end of that problem. The next thing I always ask, tell parents is that show love, care, and be the champion for this child. Show a lot of love. Oh, at the moment, you need to hear when I'm speaking with parents what they have done to the children before now. They, they, they don't show love. They, they punish them. So reading becomes like a punishment. You can't read, okay, when we are watching a movie, you go and read. When we are going out for ref, uh, recreation, stay home and read. Reading becomes a punishment. Please be the champion for this child. Once you have accepted the reality, be the champion. Show love and care. Because in trying to show love and care, then that's when you can begin to say, the child begins to feel. Remember, esteem is also there. When you keep punishing and abusing the child, you reduce the child's esteem. So when he grows up, when he or she grows up, self-esteem is very low. And that makes it difficult. In relationships, at work, everywhere, he carries this low self-esteem around, even when he knows what to say. I met an adult, he's 32 years old. He said, he will be in a meeting, he knows what to say, but he is afraid to say it because he doesn't want to be laughed at. But someone else will say the same thing and they will clap for the person and say, hmm, that person is intelligent. But he's got the idea as well, but he's just not saying it. It's because his self-esteem has been deroded. So when you show love, when you seek help, the next thing you do is you register the child for cognitive skill improvement. Okay, that's maybe too high. There is, as I say, dyslexia is a brain condition. There is no amount of teaching that will be done to correct dyslexia unless you improve on the fundamental cause of the problem. The cause is the brain. So you go to the brain, register the child in a place where they can do brain exercises and brain training to improve their concentration, which is something they struggle with, to improve their reading, to improve their spelling, to improve their writing, and improve their comprehension. Once that begins to happen, once they themselves begin to see that they are improving in these areas, their self-esteem shoots up. And then everybody starts saying, wow, what's happening? That's because you have taken them to a place or you have registered them in a program that actually works on their cognition. Now, if you say that Oh, because of the lockdown, you can't register them. That's not true. At the moment, we had, in fact, the lockdown has given us an opportunity to be able to reach children and adults in their homes. We are using the same technology we are using to reach and train them, to assess them and train them right in their homes. So we don't need, we don't need to go anywhere. Just stay at home. We would use the technology to assess whether the child has dyslexia. And if he does, how serious is it? Because dyslexia is a spectrum disease or this disorder, I'm sorry. It goes from mild, uh, to severe. mild, severe, mild, moderate, severe, and profound. So then when we establish what part of the spectrum the person is, then we'll be able to devise an intervention plan to deal with that. So parents, I say to you, first, be proud about the, what you have got. Second, be the cheerleader of the, champ, of the child. Third, seek help. Are and that help is available. Are there practical steps to being proud? Because one thing I found is how when things don't go wrong, sometimes or don't go the mm. way that we expect them to be, we start to think, could it be something I have done? So a, a woman has, or a, a mother and a father have a child, and later they find out that the child has dyslexia disorder, which is not mm. some sort of life threat, it's not life threatening. But you know how parents gloat in their children's achievements. You want to be able to brag and say, oh, my child came out. So my child is doing this, and in that moment, because you don't have that yet, you then start to feel guilty and think, was it something I did? Uh, was it something I did not do while I was pregnant? And this is mostly for women. We find that women oftentimes blame themselves a lot when they find True. certain shortcomings in their children. So I'd like you to specifically speak to the people in this position that are coming to terms. That's still talking about the first point you gave, accept, acceptance, because I believe this is one of the things, the reasons why they will not want to accept. Because they start to think, what yeah. did I do? How, how could I have done it differently? So I'd like you to address that, please. OK, good. I have spoken to parents, both Muslims and Christians. And the first thing I say to them is, 
did you have a hand in this child coming to your family to be the parents of this child? And they say, no, it's a gift from God. That's the thing to start with. If this child is a gift from God, then there's a purpose and a reason why God has put this child in your home. So accept the child like any other child. God, and if you, of course, as believers, whether uh, Christian or Muslim, as believers, we believe that God has a hand in what, we, what hand he deals us. So first and foremost, accept the gift of God. And I call it rightly the gift of God. And take this gift of God and ask God to show you what is the purpose for this child being in the family. So first and foremost, every child in your house has a purpose. My child who has dyslexia, his purpose was to lead me to this part. I was trained as a psychologist and a sociologist, but I never thought about coming to this field until I had that challenge and I had to seek help. It cost me to go and study more to find out how to support him and how to support other children. So he has become the original founder, actually, of the Dyslexia Foundation. Because if I didn't have that challenge, there would perhaps, I don't know, maybe that's why God brought it to my way. There might not have been a Dyslexia Foundation in Nigeria at the moment. There might not have been the awareness about dyslexia to the point it is now at the moment. For five good years, we've been on this. We've had two conferences, national conferences, never heard before. We are the ones pushing at the federal and the state levels for recognition and accommodation in the curriculum and in the school uh, things about how to deal with dyslexia. So again, parents, first and foremost, accept the gift of God and then explore how this gift can lead you to something else. So that's the first thing I say. The second thing is that, please, what is the thing that makes you ashamed of your child that has dyslexia? is because you have a wrong understanding of dyslexia. You have, a, you have a, a, an understanding of dyslexia as a disease, or as a sickness, or as a cause. It is none of those. Dyslexia is a special gift that God gives to people who are creative. Every dyslexic is very creative. Every dyslexic has a different way of looking at a problem. Even now, <laughs> at Every week, my son shows me that our thinking is so one, one directional. He always brings out the other side of the conversation. So you are saying something, you are discussing something, and he says, but yes, that's true. But, and when he brings out a different side of the conversation, you'll be amazed how, that, how true that is. Mm -hmm. So they have a reason for being on earth. They are the inventors. They are the creatives who create things, content, if you like, and things that can help the world to grow. And that's one of the things you must first see. And everyone we have worked with, especially the adults, we help them find their niche in life. And once they get it, they run with it. We have adults, we have helped to discover their, their niche. Two of them now are fashion designers, one in UK, one in Nigeria. Happy with it. There are others also we are helping to get back to school and be proud again, because again, Many parents just look at academics as the only way of, 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 of a child breaking through. No, there are several ways. Even if it is music that the child wants to do, once you help them build their cognitive skills, accept the fact that the child wants to be a musician. We have a child whom we have helped as well, who is currently in the UK studying music because we found out that he loved to drum, he loved to rap, and he couldn't do piano but he could do the saxophone. So with those three instruments and rapping, his father, we encouraged his father, and he sent him to a music school in UK. And he's there happily now, studying music. Mm. But he's dyslexic. So parents, I say to you, there is an advantage. There is a reason why God brought this child your way. Find out or seek help. Seek help. Because as professionals, we know how to find out what is good, what this child actually can do. We can work with you and achieve that goal. And once that goal is achieved, you will be happy for it. Like I'm very happy for my son's progress at the moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would encourage you to also try to learn from the things I've said. I speak as a professional, but I'll, I'll speak more as a parent, a proud parent of a dyslexic child. Mm -hmm. 
with my hand on my chest. I always say it. Whenever I say that, I put my hand on my chest. <laughs> interesting, <laughs> interesting. That's that's very uh, good to know, sir. Uh, you, I might. I'll just have this uh, final conversation. You mentioned uh, the early um, signs that you can get to know if uh, a child is dyslexic uh, or so. But I'm, I want to ask about the the profound signs, like you said. You said there are different levels to this. So, what mm. are those? You know, very, very. Uh, severe signs that you can, if they, you were not able to find that out while it was a child growing up and they were able to, you know, just live through to that point, what are those um, signs you would see that are extreme or so that people can actually identify that if they see it elsewhere, aside okay. from being their child? Uh, yeah. uh, they are they about 57 to 80 signs of dyslexia. Mm -hmm. So we can't say all of them. It is where you fall on the scale, when we are doing the assessment. The assessment, yeah. And actually, right now, we are running a screener. We call it a screener. If you, think you're, if you think you or your child is dyslexic and you're not sure, just go to our website or our social media platform, either on IG at Dyslexia NG or Facebook at Dyslexia NG or Twitter at Dyslexia NG. You will get a screener. You will get um, a form that just says, put in your details. Okay. You put in your characteristics, and within two days, we'll send you a report on a preliminary assessment. But to answer your question, when dyslexia is profound, one of the first things you see, again, like I mentioned, is reading, writing, spelling, and comprehension. Beyond that, there are other things. Okay. Focus, concentration, distraction, irritability, bedwetting. Yeah, bedwetting even at an advanced age, 15, so 16, 12, 13, mm -hmm. they're still bedwetting. Mm -hmm. You know, that's another sign. Um, inability to find directions, doesn't, struggles with left and right. When you say go left or right, they're struggling. Mm -hmm. They have poor memory. Okay, let me explain that. When you're doing left, right, left, right, as we do in class, yeah. you know, marching from marching. assembly to class. When you say left, they will push right. When you say right, they will push left. That's lack of coordination. So they struggle with coordination. Sometimes you have even speech issues. Their speech is not clear. First, the speech is delayed. They speak at the age of four or five, or sometimes three. So, be, but their speech is delayed. Instead of speaking at the age of one and a half or two years, they are speaking at three years, four years, five years. And even when they start speaking, their speech is blurred. It's not clear. Uh, their tenses are not tenses now, but their pronunciation mm -hmm. because of the lack of phonemic awareness. They are not aware of the sound codes in words, so they mispronounce words. Uh, they go along just anything they see. When they are reading, they tend to put in things that are not there in the, in the paper. And you're looking to see, what? Where did that word come from? Mm -hmm. It came from their head, not on the paper. That's what they want to see. So these are, there are many of them. But like I say, there's a screener we are using now. So uh, because of the doctor, we are saying, okay, many people are home. You can just check it out on IG, uh, Instagram, at Dyslexia NG. And if you're at, um, if you're at um, uh, Facebook, Facebook, is just the dyslexia ng and twitter as well so just go there you'll find a screener you can just fill in yourself it doesn't take more than five minutes to do it it's about a 12 to 18 questions and then we would do a summary of it and send it back to you and then have a conversation as well all for free it's for all free for that, that particular one hmm. their parents are worried that Th think that the children might have uh, dyslexia what's the youngest age that can be screened with this screening test you're talking about uh from from age five. From age five. From age five. Although oh. you can see the signs earlier. Okay, let me let me explain this. Although you can see the signs earlier, we intervene from age five because the program we use, the brain training program we use, is designed for children five years and above, five years to 120 years, if anybody lives up to that. So while you can identify the early signs, like I mentioned, the earliest, one of the earliest signs parents might see might be speech, the speech delay. Inability to rhyme, inability to sing the songs that the, the, the classmates are singing, or write at the level that the classmates are writing. That's part of it. So at kindergarten level, it starts showing already. But because of our intervention approach, we wait until the child is five. Because at five, then, especially the child, but the child must have speech at five, must have sight, and must have hearing. Without those three, it's impossible to do this program because some of the activities there will say repeat after your trainer. And you have to see, and then, because we also build visualization skills. 
So at five and above, we can intervene. Mm -hmm. Below that, we would advise, if you call us, we will advise on some of the things that you can be doing until the child gets to five. All and right. we always do that. Thank you so much, sir. Just so we're clear, what's the website again for those who would like to visit? All right, I'll give the website. The website is uh, www.dyslexiafoundation.org.ng. Let me spell dyslexia because some people struggle with it. <laughs> D-Y-S-L-E-X-I-A. All right. So www.dyslexiafoundation.org.ng. Dot ng. Yes, that's right. the website. Right. Instagram is at Dyslexia Foundation. Sorry, at Dyslexia NG. On Instagram, we are Dyslexia NG. On Facebook, we are Dyslexia NG. On Twitter, we are Dyslexia NG. Visit there. There's a screener. There's always a, a, a free thing for, us, for you to take away from any of our social media handles. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. And this was very insightful. It's a pleasure. I believe that parents would have learned something new. And that we can also be more tolerant. We have a culture of stigma. You know, Nigerians, once they hear that there's a name they don't understand, not just Nigerians, many people, what they do not understand, they're not able to make room and accommodation for. So we must be kinder to people who we assume are slower than us. And this is, I'm just, I'm saying this to everybody and to myself as well. We must be kinder, we must be tolerant, and more understanding of people who we feel are not picking up, maybe in terms of writing or speaking, because the truth is they just might be dyslexic and you won't even know. Dyslexia is not a disease. It's not one communicable disease. So the fact that you hear that someone um, ha is dyslexic does not mean you will start avoiding them or staying away from them. No. You will hug them, eat with them, do whatever you want to do with them, and nothing, nothing of any sort will happen to you. It is not a communicable disease because mm -hmm. we know that... Once we are not sure now, before you know, everybody says, ah, no, please shift, no, please, that's, that's not. Dyslexic. That is why we have these conversations to break down these myths and this yes. mindset. We just had a conversation with Ben Aripo, who is the chairman of Dyslexia Foundation Nigeria. Uh, thank you so much, sir, once again for that conversation. To enjoy more of this, our Ugunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.